mm -hmm. was interested in prosecuting big names at the time. And he, Giuliani, according to the information that I have, and I think it's solid, promised a conviction of the Marcoses to the State Department, to the Department of Justice. But more than that, uh, there was evidence in the case that, uh, that the Philippine government under Aquino wanted to gather up all of this evidence or, or gather up all of this property that they believed belonged to uh, the Philippine government and, the, and that Marcos uh, had had. And in exchange for that, the United States needed its bases over there. And they entered into what was called the Mutual Legal Assistance Agreement, which was an agreement between these two governments to prosecute the Marcoses. And when Mr. Marcos died, they continued to prosecute right. this widow. Let me ask you a couple of legal questions to sure. one of the best legal minds in America. Is it tough to try a case when there are two defendants and two different lawyers? Yes, it's very tough. But in this case, we had uh, uh, Adnan Khashoggi's interests were quite similar to ours. Mm -hmm. The truth was the same. There wasn't the, the defenses weren't in conflict, and uh, and Mr. Khashoggi was represented by a very, a very fine lawyer by the name of James Lynn. How long was the jury out? Three, four, three, four days. Three, four days. Did that get you a little worried after a time? Oh, 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 what, what pain lawyers go through. You know, every time I wait for a jury, I say to myself, you know, Lord, just let me get through this one and I'll never take another case. Just... <laughs> okay, the longer they stayed, the more worried you get. Oh, you know, and, and, and you can't sleep. It's, it's like waiting for a baby that's never born. Was she a good client? She was, you know, this is a beautiful woman, and she was the best client I ever had. Uh, why did she need so many shoes? That, that was obviously a point that the thought about Imelda was greed. Well, you know, that the thing that we, they never really understood about Mel, uh, Imelda was that she really wasn't a greedy woman. She was very loved, and she is loved, and she's loved by the masses of people in the Philippines. And the people here, everybody that touched her, saw her, fell in love with her. She is an absolutely marvelous wonderful human being she has she was gifted you know she she didn't go out and buy this stuff people gave it to her, her husband gave it to her rich people princes people just loved her and showered her with gifts and with respect to her shoes you know my my wife's got a hundred pairs of shoes <laughs> i think uh so what but in her case the philippines uh, the Philippines well, poor country, man manufacture shoes, and everybody that manufactured shoes and had a new model of pair of shoes wanted to have her have those shoes and wanted her to wear them. And if you if you'd go back and check her closet out, you'd find that most of them don't, don't even fit her. We'll be right back with Jerry Spence. He hung up another win. He's one of the most successful lawyers in this country. How good is he? The late Edward Bennett Williams, the greatest legal mind I ever knew. When I asked him once, who's the best? Who would you want to defend you if you were in trouble? He said, Jerry Spence. We'll be right back. Processed, you know, there's just way too much money involved, and the whole thing, I think, just bothers most people. And it, just to defend someone, I guess she has a right to defense, but I just think it's a sad statement on the affairs well, of the country. Today. Well, what about the jury, sir? Aren't you impressed that the jury acquitted? I mean, what can you say? You know, you're faced with a swift talking, slick man who knows his business, how to defend people. But, uh, you know, I look at someone like Marcos, and I just feel repelled, you know. Okay, how do you deal with that feeling, Jerry, which a lot of people have? Repelled by a country that's impoverished with leaders who appear impoverished, if there is such a word. Uh, leaders who appear to have it all. There's a, she may be popular, but uh, America at, whole, at large does not love her. You'd agree with that? Well, I, America as a whole doesn't really know her. And this man doesn't know her. What he knows, he never met her. Never talked to her, never looked into her eyes, never listened to her, doesn't know how she feels, knows nothing about her. All he knows is what he's read. And, you know, when I heard about the case, that's what I knew. That's the first, my, my first response was just like his. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I didn't take this case until I met the woman, talked to her, understood her, listened to her, and began, to, uh, and began to try to understand who she was as a human being. And uh, that's what a jury did in this case. They listened to the evidence, not what the newspapers said, because in this case, the newspapers had indeed convicted her. And this, as you can see, 
The great majority of Americans Obviously. Are, are, are believe that this woman is a bad woman. I, I happen to know who she is, and she's a very, a, a very marvelous woman. Overland Park, Kansas. Hello. Yes. Uh, hi, Mr. Spence. How do you do? Congratulations on a Thank great you. defense. And uh, as far as the other caller, you know, if you have to break the law to enforce it, uh, you know, there's something wrong with our government process. But my question was, if you could elaborate a little more on the Bush CIA connection to the Marcos that you mentioned in your opening arguments. I'd be happy to. There isn't Can any... you do that uh, quickly? I've got to get a break, but it is important. There isn't any question but what, uh, but, but, but what Vice President Bush at the time, uh, 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 the Reagan administration knew exactly what was going on, he knew, and he was the head of the CIA, you'll recall. Knew what was going on. Knew what was, what, what was going on in the Marcos administration and regime. They, the, the largest single base of CIAs uh, ba is, is in the Philippines. There wasn't anything that the Marcoses did that the CIA didn't know about. And, you know, I found out as I went into this case and listened to the evidence that there wasn't really any evidence that Mr. Marcos was a crook. There wasn't any evidence that he violated any of the laws. The government brought over here witness after witness, 95 witnesses, and showered this court with 300,000 documents. And they had the, the PCGG who could do whatever they wanted to with witnesses, you're and saying the Philip no evidence of you're any saying... violation of the laws by Mr. Marcus himself. Mm. You're saying the Philippines was like a CIA base. CIA. There were more. There, uh, uh, I'm. I'm told there are more CIA people in the Philippines than there are in any other, There were at that time in, than any other place in the, in the world. We'll be back with our remaining moments with Jerry Spence, who hung up another win, successfully defending a Melbourne.